Now, we are going to welcome again Donna Corey Gibson. Now, Donna comes from the United States, as you will probably know, those of you who have heard her sing. She has had already three appearances, no, two appearances on this, uh, uh, during this convention. Uh, she arrived in New Zealand very early in the morning on last Thursday, along with her husband and her 10-month-old ten ten old child. She's still trying to come to grips with how we speak out here. We must make funny sounds. She and I have just been talking backstage about things. She wanted to know what a bell was. So I've offered to give her a bill. So, but we're going to fight that fight a little bit later between the two of us. But she is a truly remarkable woman with that heaven-sent voice. I couldn't believe my ears when I heard her singing last night. She sang for three quarters of an hour, you know, last night, and again this morning, came on and started singing the rosary at half past eight and sang for 45 minutes non-stop. Absolutely extraordinary. What a gifted person and how lucky we are to have her. Donna Corey Gibson. And he was saying, uh, where's, where's the bill? Where's the bill? And I thought, he's looking for a, a play bill. He was, he was calling it Bill for short. I said, oh, I have one. <laughs> I said, no, a bell, a bell. <laughs> I'm like, what is a bell? What are you looking for? <laughs> ding, 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 one of those. I'm like, oh, you mean a bell. <laughs> oh, well. I'll, I'll start speaking like you before I leave, I'm pretty sure. I remember I went to Louisiana, and by the time I was ready to go, I was speaking with a southern accent. So I'll sound like a Kiwi before I'm done. So we're, so we're going to start, start with, with um, some, some prayers prayer from, from the Bible. Bible. These are word, word for word. Singing, singing makes easy memorization. memorization. This, this is, is the Canticle of Zechariah. Zechariah. Um, so, so in your mind's eye, imagine, imagine Mary just, just arrived, arrived, and Zechariah is, they're doing a little reggae, reggae step. step. Can this be a little louder, please? Let's be the Lord, let's be the Lord. That's your part, okay? Let's be the Lord, let's be the Lord. Let's be the Lord, let's be the Lord. Praise the Lord, let's be the Lord, let's be the Lord. And he says, let's be the Lord. The God of Israel has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant. says to little John, you my child shall be called the prophet of the most high, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people the knowledge of salvation, but the forgiveness of their sins. 
that's the canticle of Zachariah. And like it, this is our ladies' canticle. We call it the Magnificat. It's also word for word from Scripture. The NAS version. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for He has looked with favor on my loneliness. From this day all generations will call me blessed, the Almighty. like to sing, sing here in New Zealand, Zealand don't, don't you? you? I can tell. I have a feeling. Well, I have, I have another, another song you can help me out on. on. This, this song is a prayer, prayer taught by the angel to the three children at Fatima, 
I'm sure you're familiar with it. Is I believe, Lord, I believe, I adore, I trust, and I love thee. And I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not trust, and do not love thee. This prayer was taught to the, th the children after seeing visions of heaven, hell, and purgatory. And uh, the littlest one, she was only seven, and then Francisco was eight, and Lucia was ten. She was so affected by what she saw that she was seen to say, to be see, saying this prayer everywhere she went. Because the angel told her so many people go to hell simply because there's no one to pray for them. How sad. We need to pray for the conversion of sinners, that they be given the grace to, to be repentant of their sin and to seek God. And so many souls go to hell simply because there's no one to pray for that grace for them. And they taught them this prayer. And everywhere she went, Jacinta was sit, seen saying this prayer over and over and over everywhere she went. And so I put it to music, and your part goes like this. I believe, I adore, and I trust, and I love thee. I believe, I adore, and I trust, and I love thee. Let me hear you. I believe, I adore, and I trust, and I love thee. I believe, I adore, and I trust, and I love thee. I like, I like to, to sing, sing prayers because, because it helps, helps me to put, a, to put aside everything, everything else that, that might be on my mind or that I'm doing. It helps me clear my head and my heart. It kind of engages my whole body, if you will. Maybe, Maybe that's, that's why St. Augustine, Augustine says singing, singing was praying twice, twice. But our Holy Father said he thought singing was praying three times. So I always used to sing, and I always loved God, and I always prayed a lot. So, so it was a natural combination for me to just sing prayers. So, so we're going to sing, I believe, I adore. It's a prayer. I believe it's a prayer of reparation, of praise, and petition, and reparation.
And we just said, Lord, I believe, I believe. I love you, I love you. And Jesus said, not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom. And he said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And the scripture says that he taught so many things that if it was all written down, there wouldn't be pages enough to hold it all. And we know that Jesus taught us the truth, and for he was the truth, the way, and the life. Scripture also says, and this is a little test for those of you who might know, for good Catholics, Scripture says, the pillar and foundation of the truth is made manifest by God through the, the church. Exactly. And now we have to say, what church? Because there are so many different churches. And who would believe what they thought wasn't the truth? Everybody thinks they have the truth, even though it might be something that's opposite of what somebody else thinks is the truth. But we know there's only one truth, and, it's, and the pillar and foundation of the truth is the church. Well, how do we find the church? I like to dig into the Old Testament, because the Old Testament often sheds light on the New Testament. And where I like to go is Isaiah. Chapter 22, 22, verse 22. When, when King Hezekiah needed a new prime minister, minister. the prime minister was the person in charge when the when king was away. And uh, Isaiah, Isaiah says, says to him, these are the words of the Lord spoken through Isaiah. He says, I will place you as a father over the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I give to you the keys of the house of David, and what you shall open shall be opened. And, and what you shall, shall shut, shall, shall be shut. shut. Now, now these, these keys were very, very large wooden, wooden keys, keys. And they were, and they were so, so heavy, heavy they had to be worn, worn on the shoulder. shoulder. So, so there was no, no doubt as who had the keys and who had the, and who had had the authority. authority. And, and in the, the New Testament, Testament Jesus, Jesus uses the same, same language. language. When, when he's, he's about, about to go, go away, away and he wants to leave a prime minister, and he wants to leave someone in charge, he says to Peter, you are rock, and on this rock, I will build my church. And, and I, I give, give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So if we want to know where the truth is, where the church is, we need to look no further than the keys, because the keys were the authority given to the one in charge when the king was away. And the king is the true king of Israel, is Jesus Christ our Lord. And where do we find these keys now? They're in the hands of none other than John Paul II. So, so be obedient to your Holy Father. Father. Unity was very important to Jesus before he left, always, and he prayed that they may be one, Father, as you and I are one. Why? So that the world may believe that you sent me. We need to be united so that the world may believe in the one true God and the truth that he taught and left for us to share with others. This is Jesus' prayer. I've taken it word for word from scripture. As you can tell, there's a theme. As you can tell, there's a theme going on here. I like to sing scripture. And I like to sing it word for word. That way I don't um, have to worry about if I sing something wrong. This, this is, is Jesus' prayer, prayer with his, his intentions, with his heart, heart I would want to unite with him. All I have done is change the tense. tense. So, so instead of saying that, that they may be one, we'll, we'll say that, that we may be one, one that, that the world may believe that you sent him. him. And, and it sounds, sounds like this.
so important we should spend most of our lives engaged in it and I want to share um, something it's right here in your program playbill um, that Monsignor Paul Cronin has written prayer is a sign and a source of our hope to pray demands a great deal of faith but when we pray we grow in trust of God prayer is the beginning and the ending of our relationship with the Lord. The more we pray, the more we can get to know the Lord, and consequently, the more we can love Him, because you can't love somebody you don't know. We'll grow in knowledge of Him, we'll sit in His presence, we'll be still and quiet and hear the still small voice. Unfortunately, many of us, myself included, Stay in the first level of prayer. We know there's nine levels, according to the doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila. The first one being vocal prayer, which is anything that comes out of your mouth, which is rosary, liturgy, spoken prayers, group prayers, 
um, anything, any, any prayer, prayer, even if it's, if it's not, not spoken, spoken out loud, loud if you're, if you're saying, saying forming words in your in your mind, mind like, like let's, let's say, say you can't, can't hear me, me and, and I'm, I'm saying, saying Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. That's, that's a vocal, vocal prayer. prayer. Or if I'm, if I'm saying, saying, Oh God, God help, help me on, on this, this whatever, whatever I'm about, about to, and even, even though I'm not saying, saying it out loud, loud that's, that's a vocal, vocal prayer. prayer. And unfortunately, we stay at that level. Next level of prayer is meditation, mental prayer. And Teresa of Avila gives us a little course in mental prayer. And we, we can, can meditate, meditate really, really on anything. anything. Some, Some suggestions or articles of the faith, faith like the Creed, the, the Our Father, um, mysteries, mysteries in the Gospel. gospel. Put, put yourself there. It's, it, it, it uses the imagination. The imagination. Um, put yourself put in the presence, in the presence of, of, one of the mysteries of the Gospel. Of the gospel. Uh, meditate uh, on the words of Jesus, what he meant by them, them how they could apply to your life. Just let your imagination go. Be still. And let, and let your, your heart, heart move. move. And, and um, we're, we're going to practice, practice this. We're going to use an exercise. exercise. It's, uh, um, we're going to just say the Our, Our Father. Father. And, and as, as some suggestions, suggestions like, when, when we think, think Our Father, Father what, what comes, comes to mind? mind? Father, Father somebody, somebody who knows, knows us maybe, maybe better, better than, than we know ourselves because they were there from the beginning. Father, somebody who loves us and wants to protect us. Give us good things. Father, in heaven, you can think of how far above the ways of earth are the ways of heaven. And then, uh, hallowed be thy name. How holy you are, our Lord. And there's many lines in scripture talking about the holiness of God, the righteousness of God, the awesomeness of God. We can let our imaginations go and go and go. And, and we need, we need to, to pray, pray slowly. slowly. Teresa of Avila used, used to pray the Our Father, and it used to take her all day to say one, because she, she would stop and meditate on each article. article. So, so we're going to do that. We're going to say one Our Father. Father. Well, I'm going to sing it. We're going to do it very slowly. slowly. And, and um, we, we sing it. We say it in the states a little differently than you do here. Save us from to trial. Yeah, save us from the time of trial. And, and we say, say lead us not into temptation. temptation. So, so if you for, just, just bear with me on that line. line. I kind of like, like your, your version better. better. Save us in the time of trial. trial. That, that, uh, it, it hits home, home a little harder than lead me not into temptation. temptation. Okay, okay, so, so if, you if you would close, close your, your eyes, eyes, go ahead, Richard. Richard. And place and yourself in the presence of God. God. And we're going to exercise some mental prayer and meditation here. Thank you. 
I'm going to end with a prayer that was taken from a prayer written by our Holy Father. He's very prolific in his writing. He does put out a lot for us to read. And um, sometimes the language is hard for us to understand. But if we read it slowly, we could learn a lot. The Father of the Church, our Father, our Holy Father, and what he has to teach us. This I got from a, a book that um, had written in it. So it was called Prayers and Meditations of John Paul II. And this particular prayer, he asked us to pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, especially for the unification of Christians. And in it, he talks about the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And the bridge is, are his exact words, for union of all Christians, that the church fulfill her mission, continue in confession, and keep the counsel of God. So, let us pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The words are also found in Psalm 104. And um, this is Come Holy Spirit. And I'll ask you to help me out at the end. Spirit. 